case five is a 53 year old man with new neurologic changes. Right here we have a couple of images from an axial CT uh, with, uh, through several different levels. We've got an area of hyperintensity here in the right occipital lobe, another one kind of right deep frontal white matter, another one here in the left uh, parietal occipital region. Here you've got something that looks uh, kind of bright as well. Now we're going to take a look at an MR. So on that biggest hemorrhage that you had in the right occipital lobe, you've got a lot of uh, sort of T2 brightness, kind of a heterogeneous uh, hemorrhage there with a little bit of surrounding edema, maybe a little bit of uh, hemosiderin uh, also back in the left occipital lobe there. See some more images here. What you have uh, is an area of T1 shortening. So again, like it's pretty T1 hyperintense. You've got a little bit of uh, surrounding enhancement around it, but it's definitely not a, not a predominant component of, of enhancement there. Uh, now, if you look at the susceptibility, and or this is a gradient image, this is a T2 or flare. Uh, what you have is you have these lesions, you've got multiple lesions. They have rims of dark hemosiderosis. Centrally, they're T2 bright, as so kind of centrally bright there. Um, those are kind of a classic appearance for cavernomas, uh, so you definitely want to think about that. And one of them had a hemorrhage back here. Here, if you look at a different level, like see additional T2 images, what you see is again like multiple of these lesions. Uh, they all have a sort of similar appearance, that kind of classic appearance for cavernomas. Uh, so when you think about this now, you want to think about a general approach. There are multiple lesions. They're predominantly cortical or subcortical. This is kind of a middle-aged patient in his 50s and uh, there's no additional history that we, that we know about. Again, now, so since those were classic for cavernous malformations, this is a case where the patient has multiple cavernous malformations. Now, cavernous malformations are benign collections of disorganized blood vessels. You can see them in isolated form, uh, which is probably the vast majority, but there are familial forms which are associated with these uh, congenital cavernous malformation uh, genes or CRIP genes. Uh, about a third of them are uh, related to those. Uh, the hemorrhage rates uh, for these is around uh, 1% or less a year. It's a little bit higher for the familial lesions. Uh, for the isolated ones, it's a little bit less than a percent. Uh, so there's definitely a significant risk of hemorrhage for these lesions. Now the imaging appearance we've already seen, uh, they're dominated by blood products and on CT you can have some hyperdensity. Uh, on MR, as we've seen already, you have centrally T2 bright areas with surrounding areas of darkness or susceptibility. When you have solitary cavernous malformations, they're often associated with DBAs or developmental venous anomalies. If you see that, that sort of strengthens your confidence that you're looking at a cavernous malformation. On angiography, these are classically occult, so you typically don't see anything there. Here we'll just review the images again. So you see the ones, even the ones that have an acute, do not have acute hemorrhage, are hyperintense on CT. So you see again, like this one here, maybe there's a little bit of calcification there related to, uh, to prior hemorrhage as well.